ladies and you'll get them things. Sue, why you have to come up? Would you like to come up? Yes. That's fine. Yeah. Um, enable me to talk more openly about it to um, family and friends. Some people understand and some don't. There's a lot um, more work needs to be done out there for people to understand it. Um, I've attended dementia planning events and they sort of enable me to ensure that I refer to the dementia at the centre of all the discussions about dementia activity in the city. Um, quite often we have people come in. Um, being able to prepare what stroke is season the way support post the North Staffs. Um, I live in Cheevil and the support in Cheevil is vastly different mm -hmm. from stroke. Um, when I was diagnosed, I was in, I was just given phone numbers for Alzheimer's Society and Age UK, and um, told to contact them, and that was it. I haven't got any what's it called advocate, is it? Mm -hmm. I haven't got an advocate or anybody. Um, I've also contributed to commissioners attending the peer support group with questionnaires about various things related to dementia planning in the city, which is ongoing. And with the money received from the Enable group to purchase an iPad, the group have been able to make valuable contributions at the laughing person at the end. <laughs> to come to the proposed dementia website, looking at other websites to compare. And I've also been, um, I've done three research so far, and we're due to do a fourth one next week, which will hopefully help people in the future. how well you can live with dementia. 
Um, you know, it was nice we had some tributes to, to other people, nice to contribute at all. Um, and with the Beth Johnson group, we've had commissions coming and we've brought them and explained what our needs are and how we think that they can help us and help people with dementia sufferers in general. Um, and there's also on the trail making the making that film and it's quite, it's quite enjoyable. Um, what the main thing to remember is that just because you've got dementia, it doesn't mean you can't go and uh, what's in the very late stages. I mean, I see it as a joke. Uh, because one of the really dementia guys said, oh, you know, put little <coughs> tickets around the house. So, but you know what you're doing, don't get anything. So, did all things, you know, the men switch the lights off, men close the doors, check the cookies off before you go to bed. So, I've just put one sticking next to my side of the bed. And then sex every night. <laughs> 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 and so I a couple of films. And I've enjoyed being back to us like this. Thank you for, for having me. I'm John. I'm um, and recently, well, many years ago, yeah. diagnosed with the uh, dementia in Alzheimer's, and I was going to the um, memory clinic, and I was pleased to say that I got support of Jane as my support worker. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. No, well, must be quieter now. <laughs> <laughs> And it, I had a shock through the dementia, uh, through the Alzheimer's results. Well, we went three three months before, and we'd had a meeting with the consultants. I was told, and Jane, as much as myself, was quite surprised. He said, "You've not got dementia. Everything's well. There's a slight problem there, but it's just the memory. But it's not Alzheimer's or dementia." Both myself and Jane was really pleased for me. Three months later, I went to the memory clinic and um, they said, Oh, you won't be seen, or the consultant needs to see you. And I, I, I want to bring this up because I uh, worked out that I had to have a, an ECG and then have some blood pressure. Was it anything else? Blood tests as well. Blood tests. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the doctor because she said, I need to do them now. When the consultant called us in, she had a brief look through the file, and then she said, uh, you have got Alzheimer's. Well, that was a, it was um, like somebody punched me. It was a great shock, and um, I couldn't take it in. And um, they sent us into another room after she mm -hmm. discussed a few things. Which I can't recall because Jane can probably know I don't always remember everything. And um, I was given a lot of literature from approach. approach. But I couldn't follow it because I was so mixed up with being diagnosed with Alzheimer's and three months told me before I was clear. So it had a really bad effect on me. I shut myself off, I was in sheltered accommodation, I was well liked. I got the name Jolly John, because I was always going on, and I became a totally different person. Uh, and the warden there did the best to try and get me to go down. And I, what it was, I did go down briefly, but I found out get irritable with people, and I couldn't understand why. It was probably the way I couldn't understand the diagnosis. I could take it in. So it had a bad effect on me. And I shut myself off for about, I think it was about two months. Mm -hmm. And then gradually I did start going down, felt a bit more confident. And I'm pleased to say 
that the John and John's names come back. Uh, but I was very irritable because I thought it was frustration. I couldn't understand why me. Why was that die notion? Yeah. You'd had a meeting. You know, you know everything was well, and then told it's not well, and that uh, to this day I can't understand because it did really have a bad effect on me uh, to take in. But anyway, apart from that, that's that bit. Um, you joined the group. I joined the group uh, and the support of Beth Johnson and Jane mm -hmm. and Becky and, and the colleagues. Mm -hmm. got, you know, uh, it opened up more awareness to myself because I think I shut myself off because I thought, why, my, you're the only one with that problem. What have I done wrong? I think people don't want to know me because. I was so tense, and it took a long, well, not a long time, but I knew there was something wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. But I went to his support, um, the peer support group, peer support mm -hmm. group, and gradually I got a bit more confident. Mm -hmm. And um, been there. We went to Derby with Michael. Yes, the, when Michael yeah. mentioned yeah. Derby, I went with Michael and um, myself. Help. And uh, we had a, a really interesting day, it was very informative, I enjoyed it. Um, the organisation, you know, the peer support group, they wanted us to be there to sort, you know, we, they were pleased that we reacted to their... Um, How are you living with dementia now? You can still be involved with different projects. I think you know I've got dementia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. But, but um, um, yeah. um, Oh yes, uh, yes. Um, a, a young lady attended. I can't recall her name. I can't, John. But she was from Manchester University. Sarah. 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 Thank you very much. And, uh, she was doing some uh, caption of a cartoon <coughs> where a person was with dementia or Alzheimer's and, and they, they couldn't remember things, and they did in a cartoon caption. And uh, she interesting but it, I, kind of, I didn't feel she was, it was the right for that but at the same time after it, I thought yes it's a good thing to have a bit of humour at it because it did act a, a bit of humour which when you you're not yourself you don't have a lot of confidence I mean it's, it's really hard for me to speak to you all um, and I'm not just saying really that I'm not usually I'm happy with about four hours, <laughs> and that's too much. <laughs> so, I, I, um, it's been a great help to know that I've got the support of Beth Johnson, Betty, and the whole organisation, the colleagues, and it certainly yeah. brought me a bit close to understanding the uh, Alzheimer's. Um, but I can't. I still have problems taking things in. I still forget birthdays. Best me <laughs> Thank you, John. That's great. six seconds, six months, or six years to live. We are going to have to operate, sign here, please. They went through all the risks, and I was operated on something like 10 years ago. After that,
sometime after that, when they go through uh, a major surgery, they do a brain scan. And it was through that brain scan that I was diagnosed with this illness. Heart surgery didn't frighten me dementia death. Because I didn't know anything about it. I only knew the worst possible condition that you can have. And I believe that something like, like the professor said, a great many people think the same. I thought the same. I didn't mention it. I couldn't talk to anybody. And really and truly, it was it was an organization that actually brought me up, and I am in a state here talking about it. And the credit goes to Betty and Jane. And yourself, Mark. said about having a laugh and having some peace. Now both the thing, both laughing and crying are so private and personal, one can only do it in front of people that they really care about. And I'm really deeply honored today because of the organization and the people, the professional people that are here. And I think I can share all this and I can both have a laugh mm -hmm. and cry with all these people. Thank you. Thank you very much. over probably six years I've worked in the care sector so I felt that I had the onset of it but never really did anything about it. It was put down to um, depression um, so I was put on um, antidepressants and then last year I moved here two years ago uh, the children are all grown up and blown the nest and I live on my own and I came in from outside to find the chip pan. I used the old fashioned, or did, the old fashioned chip pan, found that it was at last heat. Sorry. It's all right. Um, looking at the chip pan, didn't have any recognition, didn't have any idea. Or I live on my own. If I'd been with the children, obviously I would have thought maybe one of those. That frightened me, so I went to the GP, sent me to the Mayo Clinic, and I um, was diagnosed. So the children bought me a, an anti fry, so I don't uh, use, <laughs> at least it has a, a buzzer on it. Um, I went, I mean, they do say that you won't be diagnosed on your own, but I was. I was on my own last year. Um, I didn't realise that, although I knew I. I felt I had it, <coughs> I, I didn't expect it on the day, so I found it devastating. And I was too given a big pack of um, leaflets, and Gary must have given Jane my number. Mm -hmm. I don't really remember how it was, we got. Yeah, I think it was delivery work and benefits. Um, yeah. I worked, I won't say what, how, where, I was a healthcare assistant with the homeless. I've worked in prisons and up till last year as on the healthcare, done the phlebotomy and different things, but work didn't know how to deal with it, so they told me to go on the sick. From I was diagnosed on the 15th of October and they put me on the sick from the 19th, and I just given my notice in because they don't feel they know how to deal with it really. They, they said I can't go back, um, but I feel now I've lost all trust and faith really in them and that is the NHS I work for. <laughs> <laughs> so, did they um, offer you a job doing the, doing the filing in, in the back cupboards didn't they? Oh yeah they offered me a job 
to go in at Christmas, wasn't Sorry, it? Yeah. Something like Christmas Eve <coughs> to go and do some filing in the cupboard in the civic offices yeah. in Newcastle. And I oh, said, yeah. no thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I used to become part of the community. <coughs> I became part of the okay. group and I absolutely love it. Um, I do think that I would have a lot of PJ days, pyjama days with anybody. Um, I've lost that pump and motivation somewhere. Um, the only way I can explain it is I feel like I'm crying inside all the time. Uh, Jane came along and I don't know if you've seen on the notice board, there's a picture of me and my son. Um, he's going to walk, do the Alzheimer's Ultra Challenge or yeah. something, walk, yeah. uh, a marathon of 63 mm -hmm. miles with the Alzheimer's. He researches everything, he looks into everything, he's 35 and it admires me to death, so I don't <laughs> tell him anything. I say, no, get on this project, get yeah, on the end. Um, so I go to the group and I love it, I met Sue and the others, but I suppose having somebody to chat to and we can have a laugh about our own <coughs> daft things we do really. Um, I'm also on the Dementia Friendly um, for the Stoke. Um, tell me if I'm the one friend. Oh yeah, they're doing an event in, in November yeah, uh, for Leek and... Mm -hmm. uh, I do forget which I'm on. What they call me, but I go to them and I have a reminder through yeah. and then I, I, I turn up. Um, and I wanted to raise some money because I felt it was really sad that um, they had to uh, rely on a, a donation for an iPad and things. And I think the peer group is lovely. So I wrote to different companies for a raffle. I had Probably 10 responses, mm -hmm. didn't I? I felt it was a bit... But then I suppose they have scammers, don't they, that write to them for things. And, but really pleased when the raffle yeah, we're we, going to do today. We are, yeah. You've sold tickets. Yeah, yourself and Sue sold tickets out and about. And we've, there's tickets available for people if they wish to buy. The, the <coughs> biggest prize is all the, the donations that companies that Colette has written to So I'm now jobless, so if anybody would like to, <laughs> I'm on the dole. Um, what have you experienced? What, being on the dole? Yeah. <laughs> it might be. We went to a care home the other day, uh, what day was that? Tuesday. Tuesday, for people with dementia, and we did some painting, and, well, and, and it's lovely, I suppose, because I've worked in the care sector, it frightens me, because I know what, and I said, I'll just cause my kids havoc. <laughs> I'll make sure Farmer comes round and hits them <laughs> if I can remember. But um, yeah, we had a really nice time and sort of we're uh, painting with um, residents. residents and had a laugh and really enjoyed it. Thank you. Is that it? Thank, Thank you very much. much.